Any way to put into words really what a win here means for you? Well, you know, it's a, an event that I've covered for years, so it's really just, I can't say, it's just fantastic. It's great to have the whole family here to see this, and it was a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, the only constant out here is change. I've been out here for 25 years climbing this mountain, and I think it's changed just about as much as it's changed me. I didn't really know how to be around racing, but once I got there, I knew exactly what I wanted. An amazing road ahead of me, a flat six behind me, and that crisp sound just powering me forward. My earliest exposure to the sound of a Porsche was in an article I read in Road and Track magazine, and it was this story about Vic Elford rallying through the forests in Europe and they described it as a dried peas in a can sound as his 911 went by. And I've always kept that in my head, that that was a pretty cool description of a 911 motor. The first time my dad sat me down in his 911, you sat there, turned the ignition key on the left, and that six cylinder would bark to life. That sound just was like a motivator. I just wanted to have that sound behind me for the rest of my life. That was 47 years ago, and at that point, all I had had was a paper route. When I look that far back, I've only been part of Pikes Peak's story for a very short time, but thousands of drivers literally have competed here and created a legacy that I've been able to drop into. The first race here was in 1916, and at that point, there wasn't even a paved road to the starting line. From here to the summit, 12.42 miles, all dirt. That was a lot for the original competitors to get through. Imagine how brutal that was in that time. They had really no information at the summit. Today, when we race here, we leave the line, we're getting reports all the way up. It was really a different era. Years later, Porsche took its very first victory, and of course it was in a hill climb. I dropped into this place in the air-cooled era. Eventually I was driving a water-cooled twin-turbo GT3 cup car. Talk about advancement in technology. Even looking back when I arrived here in 1994, the pavement only ran up to here. And one of the biggest changes is the very first mile of this course. It's all paved now. And you can see they put hay bales on the right-hand side so the guys can't get off and throw the gravel up on this paved portion of the course. By 2002, the first mile was paved. I'd been racing here for nine years already. I, I knew this place. At least I thought I knew it. So I took on a new challenge. I came here with a two-wheel drive car. And as we take a look at the high-performance showroom stock division, Jeff Swart wins in a new record time of 12 minutes, 48.31 seconds. He breaks Reese Millen's record for two-wheel drive. Coming into 2011, everything from the start line to here in Devil's Playground was paved. That was essentially 76% of the course. And the last year, we had mixed surfaces to face when racing here. That was an especially fun year for me, because I came here with a GT2 RS, and I ran slicks for the first time. Twenty fifteen was something different for me. That year I knew I had something special. I had a GT2 engine in a GT3 cup car. That was really a combination of things. 
the highest horsepower that we could get out of a Porsche motor. Combined with the best chassis out there, the GT3 Cup car. It allowed me to be the 13th person to go under 10 minutes here. While my time here is really just the modern era of Porsche, there's endless possibilities of new competition and new records to be had. Like the Cayman GT4 Club Sport class that I'm coaching this year. This next generation of drivers, CJ Wilson, JR Hildebrand, Travis Pastrana, and the others that I'm coaching, they're the guys to watch for the future. The funny thing here in 2018 is I've gone from collecting paper route money with only the dream of somehow owning a Porsche someday to helping Porsche create the next era of history on this mountain. We have a duty to protect what we love and long ago I fell in love with a flat six behind me. And now, looking out ahead of me, I'm not done with America's mountain. She's not done with me. We still have a lot of history to create together. <laughs>